Yeah, we had a discussion yesterday about Rob insisting on uh, making fun of a, of our friend Larry Flint. And, uh, of course, the Warner weighed in with uh, his view of all this. And uh, mm -hmm. Warner, not distraught about it, but certainly not happy. And, and certainly Warner reflects the views of many people who watch it listen to the program and then but here comes Rob again mm -hmm. and it's gonna do it again regardless now what 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 why why well, it's funny <laughs> funny yeah. and you know the only people who don't think it's funny are over 90 so <laughs> well, <laughs> Warner's not over 90 hey, come on well, you are <laughs> no I'm not I think it's funny Ashley might as well be he's British so. <laughs> I, uh, hey I never said I didn't think it was funny oh well, there you go no I think it's a scream I mean well, that's I, why I'm doing it but I I thought Warner had some good points well Warner. comparing Larry Flint to a, an injured veteran is a stretch yeah <laughs> He's a pornographer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's fair. He's not someone who fought for the freedom of this country. He published pictures of naked women greased up on all fours, <laughs> getting reamed like a freight train. He is <laughs> nice clayism there. <laughs> How, how do I think that the veterans feel? They probably are happy I'm loading on a Larry Flint than than now. Mm -hmm. Are you ready for this, Larry, or not? Yeah, well, where am I going to go? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tony could wheel you something back in the green room. I don't want to do that. That's racist. What? That's racist. <laughs> okay. Uh, with some thoughts on Thanksgiving, apparently. Yeah. Morning, Larry. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> Thanksgiving is a time set aside to be grateful for your blessings. Oh, yeah, I got a lot to be thankful for. <laughs> like not ever having to climb stairs again. And enjoying perpetual lap dances because I have a perpetual lap. Of course, this holiday is synonymous with turkey, and by that I'm not referring to the roasted bird that serves as the entree. I'm talking about your loser brother-in-law who shows up every year for a free meal and to borrow money because he's between job interviews and his disability insurance for the hysterectomy he says he had just ran out. And the drunk father-in-law who blames everything from Ebola to the lumps in mom's mashed potatoes on that damn President Osama before he passes out face down in the yams. Watching your sister and her husband's 18-year marriage crumble before your eyes. Would you please pass the peas, honey? Why don't you get your whore to give them to you? No. She already gave you herpes. <laughs> I don't know why, but for some reason at Thanksgiving, everything is pumpkin spiced. From your Starbucks latte to your donuts to your wife's douche flavor. No. <laughs> when did an effing squash suddenly become such a taste treat? Then there's the annual Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade where you have to watch three hours of celebrities you've never heard of waving at you from the back of convertibles. <laughs> Marching bands with mouth breather high school students from the Midwest doing arrangements of songs not meant to feature a 60 person <laughs> brass section, like Jimi Hendrix's Purple Haze, while they wear neckties tied around their foreheads. And of course, Al Roker making his annual contribution of lame turkey puns. You know, that bird you see there on the Patrolman's Benevolent Association looks like he just might get arrested for foul play. <laughs> oh, go kill yourself, Roker. <laughs> Loser. Is it a time for you to fly down 6th Avenue being pulled by ropes held by circus clowns? <laughs> Pass the stuffing. I can't reach it. Thank you very much, Larry. Well, it's once again to the Amos Play program. And uh, our old friend Larry uh, Flint mm -hmm. uh, with some thoughts on apparently. Well, let's see. Good morning, Larry. Uh, there are some people on the program who take exception to my appearances here. They feel that my making observations and comments on the issues of the day are violating some social more by mocking those with disabilities. And I'm not pointing any fingers, obviously. <laughs> it's not that I don't want to, but they feel that way for a good reason. They're stupid. <laughs> I'm not talking regular stupid. I'm talking banjo playing, missing a chromosome, stuck in the lobby because the ele escalator is broken stupid. Right. If anything, I'm an example of empowering the handicapable. 
Just because I'm in a wheelchair doesn't mean that my brain and my mouth are paralyzed like some people, such as, oh, I don't know, Warner Wolf. There you go. <laughs> I'm surprised he's offended by satirizing the disabled when he himself is disabled. <laughs> He's an antediluvian midget. When his wife wants to keep him away from the box of wine, she sticks it on top of the refrigerator. But it didn't keep him down. Sorry, that might be a bad choice of words, especially for somebody for whom elevators smell entirely different. But Warner refused to allow his handicap to define him. He let other people do that. He became one of the greatest sports reporters of all time. All time. In fact, he was inspired to go into sports reporting because he couldn't participate in sports other than horse racing. Although he could have gone pro in dwarf tossing, except they didn't have an association. But it was his high school classmate, Abner Doubleday, who said to him, you know, you should go to the videotape. Just make sure it's not running when the teeth fall out of your mouth. And Warner went on to become incredibly successful in his career, coining catchphrases like, change the rule, foul pole, fair pole, you lost, hot doggy, and who's going to change my depends? Oh, I'm sorry, wait a minute, that last one is mine. <laughs>